thanks for tuning in. I had to peel myself away from the TV today just to get some damn work done around this house. Is anybody else addicted to Ozark? Oh my god, that show is fucking crazy. Jason Bateman, man. Ah, I don't know. He gets me every time. It's not like I have the hots for nothing, but he's just a really good actor. He's fucking funny and he's talented. One of his best movies I fucking love is called Bad Words. <laughs> if you have seen it, you're probably like, fuck yes. And if you haven't, you need to go watch that shit. Basically, it's a grown man who joins uh, a child spelling bee competition. He finds a loophole <laughs> and he fucking dominates it. Definitely rated R. Don't let your kids see that. Unless you want them to expand their vocabulary. Oh god. Just remember something in high school. If anyone went to Dunville High School and had Mr. Biggs as a teacher, I remember one time he had this um, student teacher in with him. And it was a woman. I can't remember her name. I want to say, like, I think it was Miss Quack instead. Because <laughs> that was a hilarious name. Like, <laughs> she doesn't bit, she quacks instead. And I just thought that was funny. Um, so I think that was her name. Anyway, whenever um, she'd ask the the class a question and we put her hand and answer she, almost every time she's like okay now expand on that <laughs> anyway, I laughed at her during high school and um, she seemed irritated with me probably because I laughed out loud maybe I don't know I couldn't quite hide my emotions on my face I still can't you can pretty much tell if I think you're a fucking idiot by the look on my face but let's still be polite because mama told me that please and thank you go a long way <laughs> Man, anybody have an old school stove? Isn't it fun to wash these? Oh man, make sure you cover the, whatever the fuck this is called, the metal parts that plug in. Don't get them wet. This is not always good to get everything wet. Jeez, that's what cum towels are for. So when you come to our house to visit, before you wipe your hands on a towel, we might want to ask if that's the right one. Just kidding, we want to keep used cum towels around for like, hand drying use. I don't know what the hell I was thinking of yesterday, but I don't know what sparked this train of thought, but I ended up thinking in my head, we need to warn young girls who are like about to have sex and see their first dick for the first time, that dicks come in a variety of shapes, girth, and lengths. Because I remember a couple times, I was fucking shocked. I was like, oh my. What do we do down here? I never said that, oh my god. I don't think I've ever um, given like the shocked expression, I don't think. But, man, <laughs> there's one time before my hubby. There was this guy in high school who I fucking had the hots for so bad. And just after high school, um, there was a time where we were both single, single, and I saw him at a bar, I'm like, hey, let's make this happen. <laughs> I didn't say that, but that was my attitude. I was going for it. It's weird. I mean, looking back now, I can see why. But he was a total fucking dick. And everyone knew it, but he was like a lovable dick somehow. <laughs> like, he'd be an asshole to you, and it just kind of made you want him even more. I don't know. Some guys have that fucking ability. Some bitches have that ability. I can't be a bitch and still be attractive, I don't think. But yeah, some people are just fucking more attracted to assholes and bitches, right? Psychological, I guess. Anyway, we're starting to get crazy. And I go to do what I was gonna do. I start to undo his pants and he pulls my hands away. I'm like, oh, okay. He's a giver. Here, how about her? But no, I soon saw that Sunny pulled it out and it's hmm, like eh, that, but pretty damn close to a right angle. And I was like, oh, I don't think I acted like that, but I felt like that. Like, Whoa, because it fucking caught me off guard. I never knew that dicks could bend like that. I, saw, I thought something was wrong with him. Let's just say it was awkward situation. Neither one of us came that night. <laughs> And uh, it's just funny, it's one of those things that goes to show like you can hype something up so big in your head, but then when you actually get to that point and reality hits, it's like, oh, this isn't what I expected. This is not nearly as good as I hoped. The grass is not greener on this other side. And uh, sometimes you gotta learn those lessons in life the motherfucking hard way, eh? Damn. Not that that was a hard situation, but I've had other situations where I've had uh, some common sense knocked into me. 
But anyway, point of my story is if any of you guys have daughters out there and if she's getting to that teenage age where she's starting to ask about, you know, is it okay if I can go on birth control or start asking questions about sex and that, hopefully you have an open enough relationship with your daughter where she will come to you and ask you about help when it comes to that. And um, word of advice, when that happens, don't turn her away. My first serious boyfriend, I was 15 years old, and we were talking about for a while. We were gonna, we wanted to have sex. We loved it. We were in love. And you know what? <laughs> Fucking 15 years old. I know. That's young. That was over half of my lifetime ago. God, that's crazy to think. But yeah, anyway, so I went to my mom. I said, Mom, you know, me and uh, Brian was his name, me and Brian, uh, I think I'm ready to have sex. And just to fucking say that to my mother, you know how much courage I had to work up and how much fucking my nerves and my stomach were tangled up and I had to talk to my mom about sex. We never talked about that shit. Yeah, I worked up the courage, I asked her, you know what she said to me? You're not old enough, you're not ready for sex. Fucking tell you what, ma. And anybody here listening, if your daughter works up the nerve to come to you to ask her about sex, she's going to do it whether you fucking say yes or not. So put her on the pill, be smart, give her good advice, um, lift up her self-worth and let her know she doesn't have to fucking spread her legs to get approval from a man. Because that's a message a lot of chicks don't get. And you need to hear that message from somebody from your mom, your dad, or your fucking caregiver, whoever's raising you and taking care of you, and that person who's supposed to love you unconditionally. Um, but my mom was an 80s mom. Wanted to keep me sheltered and protected. I get it. Um, so what I did is I went to, I found a doctor who was a woman who I was comfortable seeing and talking to about this type of thing. I had to do a fucking pap smear because they won't give you the pill unless they check you out first to make sure you're clean and safe and doing everything the right way. So I did that. I took my body and my fate into my own hands and I went to the doctors and I went on birth control at 15 years old. Later, my mom used my backpack to go to Kansas Wonderland. And in that backpack, I had the pamphlets that my doctor gave me, like to think about sex and all the pros and cons of birth control and uh, the full spiel that they have to do. Um, so I had them in that backpack and um, my mom borrowed the bag and she left all those pamphlets on my bed. So at that moment, I thought she knew, but just didn't talk to me about it. A few years later, something happened with my sister, which is private, I'm not gonna get into that, but um, my mom and dad were divorced at that time and I remember sitting in the van with my mom and my dad's talking to my mom through the car window which first of all if your parents are divorced anytime that they speak face to face is fucking awkward unless they have a great relationship and they work good as co-parents just not in a relationship themselves but for me <laughs> growing up yeah anytime my parents spoke it was fucking weird and awkward and I didn't like it so I remember sitting in the van that night in the passenger seat and my dad says to my mom and I want you to take this one to the doctor and get her on birth control pills. And my mom said, she already is. And he said, good. I said, oh fuck. And I'm like, look at me, I'm fucking tearing up for this. So yeah, if one day your daughter comes to you and talks to you about sex, don't blow her off. Give her the down low, be honest, be open. Um, because you can't expect your kids to be open with you if you're not open with them, right? Communication and respect is a two-way street. And that's in any relationship, especially with your kids. So, anyway, um, also, hey, when that your daughter does come to you and talk to you about that, that's when you can warn her. Warn her that dick's come in all shapes and all sizes. And um, even if it's a big dick, doesn't mean it's better doesn't mean they know how to use it and I think that's really important to get across too because guys are so obsessed with wanting to be big fuck oh my dick's, my dick's not big enough gotta, gotta, gotta get this pill gotta get the fucking cock pump whatever it is there's been so many weird fucking devices and shit if there was one solution it would be known it'd be the implants for dicks funny thing is I think 
It seems like guys at that age, when they get the sex talk, it seems like they are aware that vaginas come in all different shapes and sizes and feels as well, right? But to guys, it's almost like a fucking scavenger hunt or something. It's, it's they always want to feel what the next, see what the next one feels like. And it's like, um, oh, it's like, it's like a kinder surprise for them. <laughs> It's like, yay, they see the chocolate, they know the chocolate's there, but it's the prize that they don't know what it is. Just everyone's different. Think about everyone's face is different. Of course everyone's pussy and cock is going to be different. Yeah, just give a chick a heads up. Speaking of which, my niece has her first boyfriend. <gasps> God. I don't know, maybe I should talk to my sister and be like, do you want to tell her or should I? <laughs> and you know what? Ladies? Here's some fucking advice too. If a guy comes in you, he unless he's got unless he's putting a fucking rain on your finger and gonna marry you and is gonna take care of you and that baby, if he's coming in you, he does not respect you. If he's fucking getting squirrely every time you think talk about commitments, yeah, he's coming in you, he sees you as a piece of trash. You are his cum dumpster. That's not just a funny nickname for sluts. One guy did that to me and I should have fucking slapped him in the face. That was my first reaction, but I didn't. I don't know why I didn't. I liked him too much. Uh. <sighs> Hashtag, don't be a cum dumpster. <laughs> There's some advice to give to your daughters. <laughs> don't be anyone's cum dumpster. You could be a cum canvas. <laughs> That's fine. The pull-out method works. It's all good. Well, it works most of the time. But there's no guarantee. There's some early swimmers that like to get up in there too. Damn, you know, doing this podcast thing, I've heard Theo Vaughn mention it quite a few times and a few other people too. It really is like therapy. Just to like lay it all out. Fucking no holds bar, you know? And I don't want this project of mine, this Dish It Out project, to be tainted by my own censorship. So I'm going to try not to do that. Even though my grandma wants to see this. <laughs> you know, Whitney Cummings said in an interview, um, I think it was on Rogan's podcast. It could have been Theo's podcast. She said, Comedy is for strangers, and she was fucking right. It really is. And that's because people you know personally, they have a bias. They see you in a certain light already. And if you show them another side of you, then they're they're either gonna like it or hate it, usually. And that opinion is never a true, pure opinion. It's totally biased based on their existing opinion that they've already had of you. So, you know what? Grandma, if you're watching, I love you to death, um, but this is me, and um, I don't want to censor myself anymore, so I'm just going to throw it out there. Anyway, okay, I'm going to re this again one more time. So warn girls before they have sex and start doing that shit that every dick is going to be different, and it's okay. It's natural. You just work with it and do what you can and communicate talk with the guy ask him if it feels good if it feels rough or if you're doing okay or what he wants you to do communication is big especially when it comes to that because it's your fucking body that you're sharing with somebody right i mean you're, if you're opening up that much to them communication shouldn't be a problem and you know what maybe that's a really fucking chick way of looking at it like and put your emotions into it when a lot of people don't put emotions into sex anymore. I don't know. You know what, with that guy who I was talking about from high school, I didn't really have emotion in that sense. I mean, I wanted to, I... I was, gonna, I was just gonna say I liked him, but not to the point where I want a relationship. It's kind of like, you got something I want to taste. I've wanted to taste it for like four years now, and I'm getting me a sip and doesn't mean I'm gonna buy buy the bottle and bring the rest home. And that's really, and you know, I'm saying that metaphor because I'm looking at bottles right now. Here, my lovely window. I got these awesome stained glass bottles uh, for my late Aunt Brenda, who I love to death. And I got my bamboo, my little rock that says wealth for my husband. And my pumpkin, 
gl blown glass pumpkin. That's why I use the bottle metaphor. I mean, I really like somber kind of mood. I don't, I don't know what it is. Maybe because I've been watching Ozark and that whole show is grim. Like it's like constant overcast. <laughs> and plus, like the content of the show itself is pretty dark. Plus, I watched uh, Joe Rogan's latest podcast, Nick. What was his name? It starts with a Y. I want to say Yaris, but I know that's not it. Anyway, I'll put the link below. He was wrongfully accused of rape and murder back in the 80s. Very similar to David Milgaard's story. Anyway, so he told a story and he just... Everything this guy went through from the age of seven years old being fucking raped by a man and almost being murdered by him with a rock to the head. And then he got addicted to meth and was fucking flipping cars and shit like not literally flipping i mean like stealing them and selling them and shit and then he um basically got caught up in this case of this murder issue and he ended up spending like 25 years or something in jail this man is now out and about doing speeches at schools he has a two kids and a wife and he's optimistic and anyway, and there's a movie that we're in the middle of watching called uh, The Fear of 13, and that was about his life. And there's a few other movies about him that we want to watch. And I said to my husband last night, I'm like, the very fact that this man went through all this shit and he still has an ounce of optimism in him is fucking mind-blowing. And he's like, that's why I need to watch this. <laughs> life is fucking crazy, you know? Sometimes... It's like you just gotta roll with the punches. Like Buddy from Ozark said, he's my favorite character. He's like, Wendy. He's talking to Wendy, trying to calm her down. He's like, you just gotta deal with what's in front of you. One thing at a time. I think that's pretty good life advice. Because too many people get wrapped up in tomorrow's bullshit and what's to come. And that's called anxiety. Or they go the other way and they get fucking wrapped up in the bullshit that happened yesterday that you can't change now anyway and that's called depression I guess the key is to be like buddy and focus on what is right in fucking front of you, eh? focus on the now, today maybe that's where true peace is found when you look within yourself right now and you can be happy with what you see on the way home from school today after I dropped my son off this morning I was thinking a couple locals who I feel like probably don't like me so much got me off. Anyway, it had me reflecting that I'm pretty sure there's a lot of chicks in my life, a fair share amount anyway, who fucking hate me. No doubt. And I, was thinking, I don't know why I thought about that. But you know what? I'm not stressing about it. I don't really care. I don't really care anymore at all about what people think of me. And maybe that's one thing that helps me release all of this and just fucking spill it all out. Cause I, I don't care. Like, yeah, sure I want. And you know what? Let me reframe that. Cause everybody cares to a degree what people think of them. Cause you don't want to be looked at like a piece of shit. You don't want to be, nobody wants, wants to be hated on. But at the same time, there's comes a certain point in time where you can't fucking do anything to change anyone else's mind about you. And that's okay. It's not your responsibility to change how other what to change other people's mind. Maybe it's just your responsibility to be a good fucking person in the first place. However, you handle your situations is however that person's gonna perceive you. But you don't have control over their perception. You can show a person a picture, but you can't make them see what you want them to see. So I guess in that sense is where I just don't give a fuck anymore about trying to make people see me in a certain light. There we go. There's a good way to express that. Maybe another reason why um, guys are, I guess, not shocked and surprised by different types of vaginas <laughs> is because most guys watch porn and most of them watch before they actually have sex so they have like I, I, want, I want to say a pretty good understanding of what sex is mm, or like what like the female body looks like and all that because a lot of porn is really it's like heavy fantasy based and it's not it's not really accurate to what sex really is like in real life so I hear I don't know I mean that's what they say on fucking TV 
My man makes me feel like a fucking porn star every time. So, hey, that's what you need to do. Make your lady feel like a porn star. <laughs> I'll admit it, I watch porn. I like it. I haven't in a while. I'm just, I don't know, I haven't had the desire to. But I don't shun away from it and I don't pretend anymore. Um, when I was younger, I remember there was a stigma about women masturbating, right? It was like, ew, you're, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to touch yourself. You're supposed to, you're, women, girls are supposed to be pure and, and innocent until deflower. And you know, a lot of that stigma, I think, came from my sister, because she's like, ew, about, about it. But you know what, maybe chicks need to watch more porn. So many chicks get mad at their man for watching porn, which is so ridiculous. Let him bring that, those skills home, girl. What are you doing? Man. There's a roller coaster of motherly advice, eh? Anyway, <laughs> stay wet, my friends. Peace.